Good morning, everybody. I'm just making sure that our live feed is working. So just waiting to see if people are hopping on for our 11 o'clock virtual keeper chat. And I already see a thumbs up, which is awesome. It means we already have people that are tuning in. This is just a little shot of the center of our little zoo, the butterfly garden. Okay, Chloe says it's working. Thank you, Chloe. Some of the plants are starting to come up. Good morning, Carrie. I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes for folks to kind of hop on. It's a sunny day here at the zoo, but it's also, I don't know if you can see the trees moving. It's really, really windy. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Although it's sunny outside, it's really windy. So I have actually, I'm bringing you guys inside our education classroom uh, where we have been before to introduce you right away to the star for today. It's another one of our animal ambassadors. And this is Sam. And I'm gonna let Sam introduce you to who he's got with him today. Right. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Sam, and the animal I have with me is Cisco, and he is our animal ambassador, Great Horned Owl. Great Horned Owls are called Great Horned Owls because of the feather tufts or the plumicorns, that's a fancy word for you, um, on top of their head. So people oh, think that go. they look like horns, um, but they're just feathers. Um, and those feathers are not connected to his ears in any way, shape, or form. Um, so scientists aren't really sure why owls have those tufts. Um, their best guess is so they communicate with other owls. Um, and based on their position, we can kind of figure out um, how Cisco is thinking. Uh, so if his plumicorns were slicked back, he might be a little bit more nervous. If they were straight up and down, he'd be really alert. Um, but because they're kind of right in the middle, he's pretty relaxed. Right? Uh, now, great horned owls are one of the most common owls that we have. Uh, in fact, you can find them all across North America um, in the subarctic regions, all the way down into Central America, and even into parts of South America, which I find really, really cool. So you're gonna find them in your woodlands, in your prairies, um, kind of in your deserts. Uh, you can also find them in your uh, urban areas, like your neighborhoods and your uh, cities. Another, uh, another cool thing about great horned owls is their call. Now, when a lot of people think about owls, they think of the hoo hoo sounds. Um, but great horned owls are the only owls in the world that make that noise. All other owls um, make a completely different noise. So uh, a nickname for these guys is the hooting owl. Uh, now, something that I find really interesting is that male and females differ in their calls. So if you're out in the woods and you hear a great horned owl, you can determine if it's a boy or a girl based on their call. Um, so males typically have a larger voice box, so their calls are going to be a lot deeper in their hoots, and it's going to be about five, uh, four or five of those hoots, whereas the females are going to be a little bit higher pitched, and their hoots are going to be between six and nine. Let's see if I can get in a little closer so folks can see those horns, the feather tufts. Awesome. So gray horned owls um, are the top of their food chain. They are apex predators. And because they're not afraid to go after what they want, um, because of their ferocity, another nickname for them is the tiger of the sky. Um, so when most people think of owls, they're gonna go after like mice and rats and voles um, and other small things. Um, but gray horned owls, again, will eat pretty much whatever they want. Um, they'll go after other birds as well. So they might eat smaller owls. Um, maybe smaller birds of prey. Um, they also might go after um, possums, and they're actually one of the few known predators of skunks, uh, which is very, very surprising to a lot of people because people are like, who would want to eat a skunk? They smell really bad. Um, but great horned owls have really poor developed senses of smell. Um, so if they get sprayed, hopefully not in the eyes, if it's just on their body, 
then they'll be like, oh, that was nothing, so I'm gonna keep um, munching on this skunk. It's gonna be no big deal. So that is actually our first question from Sophia, wanted to know what he eats, so that's great. Yes, Arlene, he is beautiful. Yeah, I love owls a lot. <laughs> um, how old is Cisco? Um, so we're not totally sure on the age of Cisco. Um, based on our records, I believe he's about 11 or 12 years, um, but he's been at the zoo for I think about six years now. Um, and the reason he's with us is because although you can't see it, um, he does have a permanent wing injury. Um, so somewhere in Washington state, um, he might have um, flew into something or been hit by a car. Um, so his wing was broken and it didn't heal properly. So Gretchen, age eight, is wondering how many babies do they have? Um, so typically in a clutch of eggs, they can have um, anywhere between one and five eggs. Um, two is the most common, three is um, maybe a little above average, but anything above that is going to be incredibly rare. And Cindy wants to know how long do they live? Um, in the wild, great horned owls can live to be about 15 years old, um, but in human care, uh, they can live to be between uh, 25 and 30. And Amanda wants to know, how do they turn their head all the way around like that? Cisco's turned his head a couple times. Yeah, great question. Um, so when people um, think of owls, they're like, oh, they can turn their head all the way around. Um, but owls can't do the full 360 because then their head would pop off and then you'd have a headless owl, which would be kind of creepy. Um, but great horned owls and all owls can turn their head 270 degrees. And the reason for that is because unlike us, uh, who have seven moans in our neck or seven neck vertebrae, uh, owls have 14. Um, so those extra vertebrae give them extra flexibility. So Kaiden, age nine, has obviously been watching, but he's, he says, isn't it dangerous to have an owl in a, and a skunk in the same zoo? Uh, so we don't keep them together, so there's no like predator prey sort of thing. Um, so Logan, age eight, is wondering, um, do they have predators? What preys on them? Um, again, so these guys are apex predators, so nothing really um, goes after them. I would say that their only predator would be when these guys are juveniles or little um, owlets, and their predator is going to be other great horned owls. Oh, Emma says, aw, she's two years old. She loves this owl. Um, do the males and females look different? Kaylin and Brockton wants to know. Uh, they are only different in size. The males are going to be a little bit smaller than the females. Uh, but typically the with birds color. of prey, uh, the females are always the larger because they're the ones um, sitting on the nest, so they have to do a lot more defending. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer so you can see his feather pattern. Is there a reason he's colored the way he is? Yeah, so he's this nice mottled color um, because he camouflages well um, with the trees that he likes to hang out in. Um, so he's going to, during the daytime, he's going to be right up against the tree trunk and stand nice and skinny. Um, he might raise those plumacorns up a little bit more uh, to blend in. Um, and they're not always this um, sort of darker brown color. Um, because of the, the regions that they're found in. Um, in the more arctic regions, they might be a little bit more white. In the deserts, they might be a little bit more orangey-brown as well. Um, so there are regional differences. Cindy wants to know how often they eat. They typically eat about once a day. Um, and these guys are nocturnal, um, which means that they hunt at night. Um, but they can become uh, crepuscular hunters. And what crepus crepuscular means is that they are active at dawn and dusk. Okay, and Kaiden, age nine, he asks this every keeper chat. Does he have a favorite keeper? Uh, does he have a favorite keeper? I don't think so. I think he's pretty indifferent to everyone he works with. Um, Pete Richard wants to know, which owl is white? That would be the snowy owl. So that's a different species. Yeah, of our owl. snowy owls are going to be found more in our Arctic regions, and they're not going to have those feather tufts on top. And Cindy wants to know if these guys mate for life. Yeah, these guys are, um, for the most part, monogamous. Um, I have read some that the males might kind of skirt around to other females, but for the most part, they are going to stay with the same partner year after year. Let's see, how do, uh, what do we feed him at the zoo? Kaiden wants to know. I'm just gonna uh, see if I can get a little closer. He's 
giving me his mad look. Yeah, so here at the zoo, we feed him um, some mice and some rats. Occasionally, you might feed him um, some rabbit if we get him in, but those are going to be his bigger things. So we're never going to feed him like the odd things, um, like skunks and lizards and other things like that. And let's see. Sophia wants to know if they are nocturnal. Yes, they are nocturnal. Let's see if I can scoot in a little bit more so you can get a good look at his eyes. And you can actually see his beak. Yeah, so we can start talking feet. about his eyes. Um, so he does have those very large eyes. They're about the same size as our human eyes. Um, but unlike our eyes, which are spherical in shape, um, great horn owls actually have cylindrical or kind of light bulb shaped eyes. Um, so the further you go back into their skull, the larger his eyes get. Uh, and that's the reason, again, why he has that very flexible neck. So because of those large eyes, there's no muscles in his head to independently, independently move his eyes. So he's only able to look straight and in sort of like a binocular vision. And are his eyes, is vision a good sense for him? Yeah, so I would say that he relies mostly on his vision to hunt. Um, I think they can see between about eight or nine times better than us. Um, so they have great nocturnal vision or night vision um, because those large eyes have a lot of cone cells in them, which are light detecting cells. Um, but he's actually farsighted. Um, so he can see really far away, but typically when things get really close, um, it's going to be blurry for him. So Kaiden um, is asking, are these guys endangered? These guys are not endangered. Luckily for us, these guys are of least concern. So their population is stable. Uh, Lila, age six, wants to know, can you pet him? Can we pet him? No, I cannot pet him. Uh, most birds of prey actually don't like being touched, or I should say all birds of prey don't like being touched. Um, they see it as like a predator sort of thing trying to get them. Um, so he's got that really, really sharp beak, um, but he's also got those really sharp talons and extremely strong feet. So I don't want to get my hand near him and him accidentally get me. So, yep, that was just a question from Oliver, age three. How strong <laughs> is his grip? His grip is incredibly strong. Um, it's a, and each foot, there's about 500 pounds of pressure. Um, so when he grabs onto his prey, he grabs on tight, and he's able to um, snap their vertebrae and get his, his nice kill. So Dayton, um, age 12, is asking about the chest movement. Is that because he's breathing? I think he's talking about the feathers moving. Just there you go. See how he's moving Yeah, so um, his chest is moving a little bit more. Um, so that could be two things. Um, the first, he could be a little hot. Um, so birds aren't able to sweat. So if they want to cool off, they're going to pant like us or pant like dogs to cool themselves off. Um, but because Cisco isn't an imprinted owl, um, he's never gonna be fully comfortable around humans, so he might be a little nervous. And I'm also probably a little closer than most people normally get while Sam's holding, just so you guys can get a good look at uh, up close. Can you, um, does he have ears? He does have ears. Um, so if Shara can sort of zoom in on the feathers next to his eyes, you might see sort of like a brown or a black crescent shape and his ears are underneath um, of those feathers. And like all owls, he has asymmetrical ears, meaning that one ear is higher than the other. Um, and the reason for that is because of the fine feathers around his face create sort of like a facial disc or like a satellite dish. Um, so along with his sense of sight, um, his sense of hearing is awesome. So when the sound hits it, um, it bounces off that facial disc and directs into his ears. So those asymmetrical ears allow him to pinpoint um, or triangulate where the sound is coming from. Um, Zade age six wants to know, um, how does he survive in the winter when all the animals are hibernating? Um, so not all animals hibernate, so there's always gonna be rabbits and squirrels and things like that out there. Um, owls are really good at staying warm as well. So underneath these brown feathers, he's got a lot of those downy, um, sort of softer feathers. And when birds get cold, they can actually sort of puff their feathers up a little bit um, that traps air in them to insulate. So when we wear our down jackets, it's the same sort of thing. Okay, so uh, we have a teacher checking in from Laredo, Texas, saying that she watches us with her students. Thanks, Janie. Um, that's awesome that we're Thank reaching people that far away. So um, Kaiden is wondering, was he found in the wild or did he come to us from another zoo? Uh, I believe he did come to us from the wild. 
So because he um, had that wing injury, he wasn't able to survive in the wild. Um, so the rehab facility that found him um, put him up on a site to see if he wanted to be an ambassador for another facility. All right, and Logan H8, this is a good question, wants to know what kind of owls are found around here? That's a great question. Um, so I believe we have a few different species. Um, so again, we have the great horned owl. Um, we have eastern screech owls, which look like great horned owls, only a little bit smaller. Um, so those are gonna be a little bit um, more either gray or red. Um, we have barn owls. Uh, we have saw wet owls. Um, I believe we have long-eared owls as well. And occasionally we do get the snowy, snowy owls. owls. Well. Yeah, I was gonna say that. So um, I mean, those owls look differently and they're all gonna have different calls. And Amanda wants to know, do his eyes blink independently? Can he blink one at a time? Yeah, he can blink one at a time. So maybe one eye is drier than the other, so he's gonna blink. Um, you may notice when he blinks, he has this sort of clear covering that goes across his eye. Um, so that's called a nictitating membrane. So all birds have that, and even our reptiles have that as well, um, because those two are related. Um, so that nictitating membrane um, is sort of like a windshield wiper for his eyes. So if he gets any dust or debris on it, it just wipes it off. Um, but even if he's like flying through some trees or maybe he's feeding babies, um, they'll put up that eye covering so we can still see but protect his eyes. Um, so Juliana, age six, has a great question. Is he heavy while you're holding him? He is a little heavy. Um, so I weighed Cisco about, la um, I think last week, and he weighs about two and a half pounds. Um, now that may not seem like a lot, but when you're hurting, holding a bird straight out um, with your arm for a long period of time, your arm does get tired. So Sophia wants to know, if he's nocturnal, why is he up now? Good question. Uh, that's another great question. So um, <clears throat> our ambassador animals sort of change their sleep schedule a little bit more um, since they do come out for programs. Um, so when he goes back to his enclosure, he probably will take a nap. Um, but owls don't sleep like we do. Um, so when we go to sleep at night, we hopefully sleep for seven or eight owls, um, hours at one time. Um, but owls um, take sort of short naps. Um, so they're going to be out on the trees. The sun's always going to be hitting their face. Um, and occasionally they'll wake up every little bit um, just to check their surroundings. So, oh, thank you, Blanca, donated. Um, and that we so appreciate that because this helps keep us going. Um, Logan, age eight, has another great question. Would he make a good pet? He would not make a great pet. Um, so, again, those owls have those really strong talons and those strong beaks. Um, and they really don't like being around humans all that much. Um, and we also don't want to take owls and other animals out of the wild and keep them as pets. Um, so that's why we can always go to zoos or other facilities um, to see these wild animals up close. How long do they live? Uh, in the wild, these guys are going to live to be 15, um, but in human care, uh, mid to late 20s. And how wide would you say his wingspan is when he's... His wingspan in particular, um, maybe three and a half, four feet. Um, it can range between three and five feet with their wingspan. And where do owls kind of fit into the ecosystem? What are they... I know you talked about when we had our turkey vulture out, how they're the scavengers. What do these guys help with? Yeah, owls... Um are going to be our predators. Um, so great horned owls, again, are apex predators, so top of the food chain. Smaller owls might be sort of in the middle, um, but these guys are great at keeping our rodent populations under control. Um, so other animals are gonna eat them, but owls are gonna eat um, tons and tons of rodents. So, um, pest so if we control. didn't have owls, um, our rodent populations would just explode. So I believe uh, a single family of barn owls, so a different kind of owl, um, but a single family of barn owls can eat a couple thousand mice a season. Let's see if I can get, um, I'm going to close in a little bit so you can kind of see um, the talons that you were talking about and how they're kind of gripping the glove. And you're obviously wearing a glove. Is that a special glove? Right. So this is a leather glove. Um, so it protects me from his sharp talons. Um, now I can still feel the pressure from his feet, but it's so those talons um, don't go into my hand. Um, so those strong feet are great for gripping onto prey so they won't let go. Uh, and one cool thing about um, great horned owls is that although right now he has three toes in front and one in the back, 
If he wants an extra grip, he can actually rotate one of his toes backwards, so two in the front and two in the back. Here's a good question. So Carson H6 wants to know, does he ever get mad when you're showing him to people? Uh, he gets mad sometimes, if maybe if we're a little too close or he's having a grumpy day. And Shane uh, wants to know, what is his name? His name is Cisco. Okay. Uh, so again, this is Cisco, our great corn owl. Um, to our knowledge, again, he is about 11 years old. A shout out to Paul because he donated and he's been asking us some great questions today too. What would you say um, Cisco's favorite thing is to eat? Uh, probably mice. Um, so because he is a nocturnal eater, um, I actually never see him eat. Uh, it is a rare sight for me to put his food down and him to go down and start munching away at it. Um, but I would say mice. And Sophia, who's six, wants to know, does he sleep with one eye open? Uh, no, these guys will sleep with both their eyes closed. Uh, occasionally, they will kind of open their eye, both their eyes in like a sleepy daze just to check their surroundings, uh, but then they'll close both their eyes again. So Kevin is asking, is he, is he stressed out because of the way he's breathing? Uh, so again, because Cisco is not an imprinted owl, um, he's not totally, totally going to be used to people, no matter how much we try. Um, so there's always going to be a little bit of stress being around people. Um, but I would say for the most part, he is comfortable. Again, his ear, his feather tufts aren't slicked back. He's not sort of crouching down like he wants to jump off. And it is also a little warm in this room. And just so folks know, I'm actually closer than we usually let most folks get to him while he's on the glove, just so I can, um, it's difficult for me to zoom in and out without um, flipping the camera around and you guys don't wanna see me, you definitely wanna see Cisco. Yeah, again, it could be the heat as well. Um, these guys are like, it's like they're always wearing a down jacket and because they can't sweat, they're gonna pants to cool themselves off as well. So I think we, we're running, I'm just going back, scrolling back through to make sure that I did not miss any of your questions? Yeah, so I can talk a little bit more. Um, so a lot of times when we think of owls, we think of their owl pellets. Um, so when he's gonna eat um, whatever food, um, so the mice, the rabbits, the squirrels, whatever, um, he's gonna digest all the really squishy parts, maybe like the organs or the muscles and things like that. But the hard parts like the bones and the fur gets compacted inside of his stomach. And then once it gets big enough, he's gonna cough it up into an owl pellet. So almost like a cat coughing up a fur ball. Yeah. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. I definitely think we've touched upon um, most of them. I'm just scrolling back to make sure we didn't miss any. We talked about um, the vision with his eyes. Mason H4 wanted to know if he had good vision. Yeah, again, he, his vision is about eight or nine times better than us, but he has um, far-sighted vision, not near-sighted vision. All right, let me see. Oh, here's a good question from Oliver, um, who's age three. Does he fly south in the winter like other birds? Uh, great horned owls are not migratory, so they will stay in their um, territory all year round. And how big is their territory? Uh, I believe it's about two square kilometers. All right. Do these guys, how do they live? Do they live in groups? Um, for the most part, owls are going to be solitary um, unless they have a mate who they stick with. Um, for the mating season, they're going to be by themselves. Um, and great horned owls typically mate um, and start breeding earlier than other owls. So late winter, um, maybe uh, late December, early January. So that's when you're gonna hear a lot of the hooting. Um, and typically uh, they're gonna start having their babies probably around this time. And um, how many babies can they have and how long do they stay with the parents or the mother? On average, they're gonna have about two or three eggs. Uh, I think two is about average. Um, they're gonna stay with their parents um, for a few months. So when these guys hatch, they're gonna be the nice sort of fluffy down um, and they're gonna start growing, they're gonna start fledging, um, but the parents are always gonna keep looking out for them. And do we feed him, um, Kevin wants to know, do we feed him live food or frozen? Uh, we feed him uh, food that is already 
died. Does he get any live food? Do we do mealworms or waxworms or insects with him? Uh, we don't feed him any insects. Um, great Orn Owls typically don't feast on insects. It's a little too small for them. It's not going to be um, worth the chase hunting insects, but other owls definitely will eat insects. Uh, Kaiden wants to know why he isn't hooting now. When do they normally um, make vocalizations? They'll typically make vocalizations um, when they're calling out to other owls. So again, um, males are gonna have between four and five hoots, but females are gonna have between six and nine hoots. Okay. And different owls have make different sounds. Correct. All right, so I think we have answered all the questions that are coming through. I'm just gonna try and get a little bit closer so you guys can see. His beautiful feathers again, his beautiful eyes, he's looking at me. Yeah. So um, one thing I want to say, because it is typically baby season right now, um, a lot of the rehab centers are starting to get um, baby owls. Um, so again, when they are fledging, they're going to be up on the tree branches starting to figure out how to fly and they're going to be hopping around. Occasionally an owl might fall out of the tree. Um, to us, that might seem scary. Maybe that owl's abandoned by its parents. Um, but just for all of you out there, if you do see a baby owl on the ground, just leave it as it is. Um, typically the parents are looking out for it and after a few days that owl is gonna climb back up in the tree. So you don't need to call any rehabber, you don't need to call anyone else um, if that owl isn't in distress. So just let those baby owls be on the ground. Um, so Carson wants to know if he likes the cold or the heat better? Probably the cold. Um, so he's got that nice downy layer to stay warm. If he's gonna to be too hot, um, he's gonna start panning a lot and be a little bit more sluggish. And Kaiden, age nine, wants to know, do we have any other owls? We do have another kind of owl here. Um, so aside from Cisco, we do have two Eastern Screech Owls. Um, they look like great horn owls, but only about a third of the size. Sophia so is wondering, um, how much does he eat in a day? In a day he eats, um, about a hundred or so grams of food. Okay. All right. I think that we have run through all the questions we have. And I'm going to try and get up close to him one more time so, so you can get a good look at his eyes. Actually, the question, can he blink one eye at a time? He just did that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, wait, we have one more. This is a great question from um, Kayla. Actually, it's not a question. Um, wanted um, to ha have us talk a little bit about the dangers of using um, pesticides or rodenticides. Oh, that's a, a great thing to talk about. Um, so again, owls are great at pest control. Um, they're nature's um, mice cleanup. So when we put out my, uh, rat poison or mice poison and things like that, um, those mice, when they eat whatever has been um, poisoned, they're not gonna die right away. Um, typically for a few days, they're gonna be a little bit more sluggish, they're not gonna run as fast, they might be a little bit more dazed. Um, and to owls, they're gonna be like, hey, that's an easy meal for me. That mouse or that rat or whatever is moving slow. I'm gonna go after that. Um, and so because owls will eat a lot of mice at one time, they're not just gonna eat one, they're typically be eating, um, they might be eating a lot of mice affected by that poison. Um, and it's not just one individual that might be affected. Um, so because it is baby season right now, um, and these guys are gonna start um, feeding their young. So if you poison one mouse or one rat, that could kill probably five or six owls. So there are some rodenticides out there that are um, safer to use if you have, say, a cat or a dog. So if you're um, having an issue with uh, pest control, just make sure to check and make sure that what you're using, if it's safe for your family pet, it's it's um, going to be um, better for um, the wildlife in the area as yeah. well. And if you want to encourage more owls to hang out in your backyards, you can always put up an owl box. Um, a lot of owls are cavity nesters, so when you put up that box in your backyard, it should encourage them to come and I'll take care of your rodent populations. I agree. And thank you to Pete, um, who says, nice job showing city kids the wilderness they don't get to see. These guys um, are difficult to see, even um, if you've got, you know, a forested backyard or an area near where right. you are. Because I have they gone camel out so many times looking for owls during the daytime, and I've never seen one, unfortunately. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today. If you are able to, we would love your support in the form of a donation. Um, the money that you donate helps us, uh, our Zoological Society, keep these sort of programs going. And I'll say one, get one more little close-up of Cisco. And we hope you guys take the time to go enjoy the sunshine. And Carson says, thanks, Uncle Sam. Thank you for so joining us. That, thank you for joining us. You guys have a great day.